Hey Vault Hunters, JB here and today I'm sharing my beginner's guide for Mayhem Mode. Be sure and subscribe and hit the bell for more Borderlands 3 videos just like this. I just finished my first playthrough of Borderlands 3 this past weekend and had an absolute blast. I loved this story. But if you're like me, at the very end you unlocked Mayhem Mode. And I was kind of confused. I was like, when should I use this? Is this appropriate to turn on for Troot Vol Hunter mode? Should I finish all the side quests in normal mode with Mayhem on or off? Or should I just wait until level 50? The game shows you what it is, but it doesn't really explain when to use it. So that's what this video is, a very basic beginner's guide on Mayhem mode. Mayhem is unlocked at the end of your first playthrough, so you have to have beaten the story on that specific character in order to activate Mayhem levels 1 through 3. And like I mentioned before, Mayhem can be used in normal mode, so let's say you're just like me and you finished your first playthrough of Borderlands 3, you can activate Mayhem if you're on that same playthrough on normal mode, go back and finish up the side quest and use it that way. Or if you want to start your new playthrough on true Vault Hunter mode, you can activate Mayhem in that as well. Here's where you can use Mayhem mode. So this is the part of the ship sanctuary where you can access it. Now keep in mind, if you're on true Vault Hunter mode, you just finished your normal one and you're like, okay, how do I start immediately? You have to wait until you unlock sanctuary in the story in order to use Mayhem. So don't worry about that. It's not a menu option or anything like that. It's in the game. This is the console that you use to toggle Mayhem mode on and off and also control the level, the difficulty of Mayhem. So you pretty much have several different modes, either no Mayhem, so it's just normal, like your first playthrough, or you've got Mayhem 1, Mayhem 2, or Mayhem 3. The purpose of Mayhem is to reward you for making the game a little bit more difficult. That's the best, easiest way, I think, in layman's term to describe this. What you're going to get out of Mayhem is better loot, better experience, better cash and Iridium in exchange for more of a challenge. So you can think of it as a hard mode for Borderlands. Let's take a look at each individual level of Mayhem mode. When you activate Mayhem 1, this is what you get. First off, 100% better loot quality, which is double. It's really insanely good and you'll feel it immediately. You'll also get 10% more experience, a tiny little bump there. You'll get 30% more Iridium and cash in the game, which is very solid. And in exchange for all of this awesome stuff, your enemies have 15% more health, and then they have 25% more shields and armor. Additionally, you have Mayhem mods, which is something I'm gonna explain a little bit later after we talk about each level of Mayhem, so keep that in mind. But you also have to deal with two Mayhem mods which are randomized once you activate Mayhem 1. These can really change what your strategy is in Mayhem. So pay close attention to these, but again, a more in-depth explanation is gonna come after I explain these levels. So what is the actual impact? What does it feel like to play Mayhem 1? Well, from my experience on my true Vault Hunter mode playthrough of Amara, it just felt like a better game to me, particularly the loot quality bump. You feel it immediately. It is so impactful to your experience because I don't know about you guys, but my least favorite part of Borderlands is inventory management. It's what do I pick up? What do I chuck? What do I keep in order to sell? Is this even worth picking up? My inventory is full. You guys know the experience and the feeling. 100% better loot quality translates to two separate things for me. First off, it means you're getting sideways drops, items that are just as good as the things you have equipped, but maybe they're better for the situation or for the feel. Let's say you don't really like Maliwan, like me and like most people, but instead you get a doll that's the same item score. That's pretty much an upgrade to you, but it's the same item score. So you're gonna see a lot of drops like that, but also in almost every single fight, you're gonna see an upgrade, something that is just better. It has a better item score. It's more appropriate for the situation that you're using it in. It's a true upgrade. That's what you feel in Mayhem 1. Instead of getting a lot of guns that are not that great and relying on quest rewards to give you a true upgrade. The 10% experience gain is nice. It's not super consequential in my opinion, and it's not the reason you're really gonna hop into Mayhem mode, but if you're grinding, it makes sense to put this on. The Iridium and Cash bonuses are really nice. I would use Mayhem in general in order to generate Iridium or cash in order to get all of those SDU upgrades at Marcus on Sanctuary or to get a lot of cosmetics from 
Earl or to use them at the veteran rewards machine in order to get those really good anointed weapons. I would make sure that you have at least Mayhem 1 mode on if that's what you're trying to do. As far as the difficulty is concerned, what with the extra health your enemies are going to have and the extra shields and armor, I think if you're playing Borderlands the right way and you've kind of learned how this game works through one playthrough, this should be a piece of cake. This shouldn't bump the difficulty that much for you. Borderlands 3 is a game that goes out of its way, so far out of its way, to make you feel very powerful. You should feel overpowered. And so the little exchange here for slightly tougher enemies, for much better loot and better cash and experience, is far worth it to me. So when should you use Mayhem 1? I think, personally, that once you beat the game for the first time on your character and unlock it, this should be your new baseline. Always have Mayhem 1 mode on because you're going to get better drops and I think the game is arguably more fun with slightly tougher enemies. I think the game is a little easy outside of Mayhem 1. So I would just use this all the time, no matter what. Let's dive into Mayhem 2. So very similar experience here. It's just going to be harder. So first off, you get 300% better loot quality and you can really feel this. Every single badass that you kill is going to drop a really good upgrade for your character, no matter what. The experience gain is 20%. That's really nice. Iridium and cash gains are now 60% better, which is awesome. But your enemies are a lot more tough. Their health is 75% higher than normal. And then their shields and armor are 100%. They are double what they are in normal mode. The next thing to consider is on Mayhem 2, you're going to have three Mayhem modifiers. These are killer. It felt really tough in this mode, and it's really do or die. Whether you get good modifiers or not can really change your ability to handle Mayhem 2 or get crushed by it. There is a little trick that I found, and this is something that you can either use or just ignore, and maybe you like making it tough on yourself, or maybe you want an easier level of Mayhem 2. What you can do is change these modifiers really easily especially on PC where the load times are really quick. So what you're gonna do is activate Mayhem 2. And then whenever you travel to a destination, you're gonna open up the map and see which modifiers are active. And let's say you get some really crappy ones that just are so hard, it's gonna be difficult for you to even progress in the game. All you need to do is fast travel back to Sanctuary, go to the Mayhem console, and then toggle Mayhem 2 or whichever mode you're using on or off. That's all it takes. Then you can fast travel back to your destination and voila, you will have a new set of Mayhem modifiers. It's a little cheesy. I understand why people maybe wouldn't want to do this. It feels like you're cheating the system to get a favorable one. But hey, I mean, that's what you can do. It's very easy to do. Why not? Just keep in mind, if you begin to not have fun, but you still want really good loot, this is a possibility. Finally, we have Mayhem 3. Now, I've got to tell you, I don't think that Mayhem 3 was designed for your first true Vault Hunter, like, turn it on right when you get to Promethea sort of experience. It is really tough. So the loot quality, however, is 500%. It's going to be five times as good as what you experience on normal mode. To put this into context, the first badass that I killed in this mode dropped a really good purple weapon for me. Just boom, right there. You also get 50% more experience, so it kind of ramps up there on the scaling. You get 100% better Iridium and cash drops. The health of your enemies, however, is 150% higher than normal, and their shields and armor are 200% higher. Like I said, Mayhem 3 is very tough, and if you're level 50, it's something that you can probably breeze through, and I'm sure you guys have seen videos floating around the internet of people crushing Mayhem 3. That's certainly possible, but just don't think you're gonna turn Mayhem 3 on as a level 38 like I did and have a good time. I literally could not kill a group of four badass heavy enemies. They just crushed me. There was nothing I could do, even with favorable modifiers. Speaking of, you now have four randomized modifiers to deal with on Mayhem 3. So that gets even worse. It's really a roll of the dice on that, whether you get something that allows you to get through Mayhem 3. And again, this is all within the context of someone who's on their true Vault Hunter mode playthrough, not a level 50 or not. It really does rely on those modifiers. Speaking of, let's switch over to talk about Mayhem mods. As we've explained, these are modifiers that are randomized every single time you activate Mayhem mode. 
and they scale in difficulty. So these are going to be tougher and tougher, the higher level of mayhem that you have activated. And then you'll have more of them, the higher level of mayhem you have activated. So mayhem one has two, mayhem two has three, and mayhem three has four different modifiers. What are you going to be dealing with in terms of these modifiers? Well, you have a full list of them at the console where you toggle mayhem on or off. It's to the right. It says mayhem information. So you can read through those. I'm going to kind of reference to a few of them in my examples here, but essentially there are what I have found to be three different categories of modifiers. The first are mods that make enemies tougher. So for example, enemies will take 15% less damage from cryo elemental weapons. That is a modifier. And there's one of those for every single type of element, as well as one that just makes enemies take 15% less damage from normal damage, which is non-elemental. So that's something to consider there, but also you have increased fire rate, enemies have more health, uh, fire an additional projectile at you, which essentially just doubles their damage per bullet. Uh, they're more accurate and they have bigger explosions. Those are all things you could get. And out of those, I would say fire an additional projectile is probably the most deadly. The next category are give and take modifiers. These are modifiers that will nerf you in some way, but then give you a pretty nice boost in another way. For example, there's one that gives you less shield and health regeneration, but better movement speed, better fire rate, and better reload speed. There are also gun-specific modifiers. For example, there's one that makes you deal less assault rifle and sniper damage, but more pistol, SMG, and shotgun damage. There's one that nerfs all of your gun damage, but boosts your action skill and grenade damage. You guys pretty much get the gist on that, so what you wanna do to counterbalance these is to make sure that you're specializing in the boost that you're getting, and you're not using whatever you know is being taken away from you. Here's a few very important things to keep in mind with modifiers. First off, on Mayhem 2, there's a chance that you get a new modifier that will never appear on Mayhem 1. So this is exclusive to Mayhem 2 and above. Enemies will have a 5% chance to reflect bullets. And there's really nothing you can do to counter this unless you plan on not shooting or using a grenade melee skill only build something wacky like that. So that is a possibility in Mayhem 2, but in Mayhem 3, there's a modifier where enemies take 30% less damage from critical hits. So that's a pretty solid chunk. I would say it's still probably worth trying to go for critical since at their base, it's double the damage. So once again, at the base, all things equal, you're dealing 70% on your crits, not 100. So I wouldn't really adjust based on that modifier alone. But if you happen to have it, it'll just make things that more difficult. It's something to absolutely consider if you have that modifier on Mayhem 3. I know I've said this before, but I think it's worth repeating as well. These modifiers are going to scale up based on the level of Mayhem that you have activated. So take Bulletproof, for example. Enemies take 15% less damage from normal attacks. That's gonna be 50 on Mayhem 3. It really ramps up and scales up the difficulty, and that's something you're going to have to work around or just get murdered. So that's it for the informational part of the video. There was a ton of it, but I just wanna give you guys kind of my thoughts on Mayhem in general. Like I said earlier, I really love Mayhem 1. I think it's the new normal. When you beat the game, I wouldn't play on anything other than that. Your loot sort of progression is going to be a lot more satisfying. And then I also think that the challenge from the game, that little bump is also more satisfying. It feels like you're doing more than just rolling over everything that you encounter. In terms of leveling up in true Vault Hunter mode, I think Mayhem 2 will strike a chord with a lot of people that enjoy a challenge. I think it's legitimately challenging with that extra health and shields and armor boost. It's something that really changes the way that you play in a way that Mayhem 1 really doesn't because the scaling is not there. Mayhem 2 is really when you start to feel that. And so I like Mayhem 2. It's just something that I have to be in the mood for. Finally, for Mayhem 3, it's simply ridiculous. It's really tough unless you've min-maxed and gone for that level 50 build that a lot of people are sharing it's going to be rough and it's something that you're going to have to prepare for or maybe grab a group and try to tackle together and uh, maybe you've got some better synergy in a group or you've got a class mod or an anointed weapon that really really makes you insanely overpowered then yes i think mayhem 3 is the way to go if you're trying to get that god roll if you're trying to kill the gravewalker as quickly as possible if you're trying to 
outflex your friends on how good your Vault Hunter is on damage output, yeah, this is probably the way to go. But outside of it, I'm not so sure that Mayhem 3 gives you anything valuable other than crushing your dreams. But maybe you're into that sort of thing. I don't really know. All right, guys, that was my starter guide on Mayhem Mode. I think it's something you absolutely should explore once you've beaten the game. I hope this helped you guys understand how to use Mayhem Mode, where it's most useful, where it's less useful, and everything in between. So in the comment section, tell me what you guys have experienced so far with Mayhem Mode. Are you using it to farm certain bosses because of that huge loot quality boost? Are you using it for a better challenge in the game? Let me know about your Mayhem experience in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, remember to hit that like button and subscribe and hit the bell for more Borderlands 3 content. If you want to stay up to date and join my community, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and join my Discord community server. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.